In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and grant that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to one another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside and remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the most high's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. 
For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, They were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you have not had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he paid back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from the heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Why is it so hard for us to forgive? Why is it so hard for us to forgive? When we get hurt in some way, some way something happens to us, we hold on to a particular pain so easily We hold on to a hurt, we hold on to our anger, and we just don't want to let it go. Why is it so hard for us to let that go, and so hard for us to actually forgive? One of the ways I think we can look at this is I'm somebody who suffers from migraines. When I have a migraine, I will do absolutely anything to get rid of it, absolutely anything. I just hope and I pray that it'll just somehow go away. But one thing I noticed is when I focus on the pain, it gets a lot worse. It never gets better. It only intensifies as I focus on my head pulsing and the pain that goes with it. It's only when I focus on something else, when I focus on prayer, when I focus on feeling better, when I focus on breathing, some other tactic, that then I start to begin to feel a little bit better. And in time, eventually the pain goes away. Of course, there are days where I hope it goes away a lot quicker than others, and other days where it lasts even longer. But the point is, when I focus on the pain, when I focus on the hurt, it just intensifies. So I ask us once again, why is it so hard to forgive? Because that's what happens. When we focus on the pain, when we focus on the anger, when we focus on the hurt, all it does is intensify the same way a migraine would, the same way any physical ailment would. And anybody who suffers in any way with something physically, I'm sure in a second 
would pray for it to all go away, for someone to take it away, and for healing to actually happen. Jesus points out in today's gospel how many times we're supposed to forgive. Peter asks, is it seven times? And Jesus says, no, 77. And in other gospel passages, he says 77 times seven, even more, basically saying you're always supposed to forgive. I think one of the greatest difficulties we have with forgiveness is we somehow get caught up in, I can't forgive this person. I can't forgive what they did. Because if I do that, somehow I'm saying it's okay. It's okay the way that I've been wronged. But the answer is no. It's not about that at all. What we really want to get to is forgiveness not just for them, not just to hopefully reconcile with them, which would be the greatest outcome, but more importantly, to forgive for ourselves, to forgive for God, to allow Him to come in and to heal in that moment. Because when we do that, we focus on the other things. We focus on the healing and not on the pain. So as we ask ourselves, we focus on how often am I supposed to forgive? How am I supposed to actually follow that? We need only look behind me, looking up at the cross. Jesus on the cross says the words, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Jesus, when we approach him in the sacrament of reconciliation, forgives us no matter what we've done as we come to him, looking for forgiveness and healing. He's a model for us because we don't deserve that forgiveness, but he's still saying, I offer it to you. He doesn't want us to focus on the pain. He doesn't want us to focus on the hurt. He wants us to focus on the healing, to focus on his mercy, and to focus on his love. So every time that we have a moment where we say, how can I forgive? Which do we want to focus on? Not saying that it's okay, but do we want to focus on the pain, or do we want to focus on God's love and the healing that will always come? And so let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In trusting in God's mercy, love, and compassion, we now offer our prayers and petitions before him. We pray for the church. May the Lord bless her and keep her safe from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for harmony and justice in our nation and across the world. May the Prince of Peace dwell in our hearts forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are holding on to past hurts and grievances. May the Lord give them the grace to forgive and be forgiven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are gathered today as we mark the 19th anniversary of 9-11. May we never be forgotten that those who lost their lives in the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and in Pennsylvania, and all the first responders who responded and who lost their lives that day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all those we've been asked to pray for, and for those throughout the world who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our family and friends who have died, 
May they rest forever in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask you to hear these prayers we bring before you and answer them according to your will. For we ask all this through Christ our Lord. And so let us stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord our God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each is offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as together without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, all the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us, through Christ our Lord. And together we make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, and we pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. The Mass is ended. Let us go in love and peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.